All right. Well, hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Um, following a series of uh, webinars and seminars that we've hosted specific to the bid management profession today, uh, we're excited to be speaking with Sean Williams, founder and chief executive uh, of Autogen AI. Um, we'll be looking at the features, benefits, myths and perceptions uh, of artificial intelligence uh, in the bid management profession. Welcome, Sean. Good to have you with us today. Yeah, an absolute pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. So look, I'll probably talk for about half an hour uh, and then take uh, take questions if that works for everybody. Yeah, uh, I've got some questions quite specific to this. Uh, then, yeah, I wanted to see if you were happy to do a bit of a walk around of the platform and then questions from the audience as well. Absolutely. That works. Absolutely. Good, good stuff. Um, just as a starting point, Sean, good to hear um, just a bit about like your career journey to becoming the founder of Autogen AI. Yeah, so I've, I've been very fortunate. I've had three careers. So uh, in my first job, um, well, my very first job, I was an unemployment advisor in the employment zone in Brent. But my second job then was writing bids, tenders, proposals and doing research to start with for bids to run employment services uh, and then to run um, you know, bigger uh, employment contracts and then training contracts uh, and then call centres and all sorts of big kind of uh, business to business and business to government services. So that was my first career. Uh, and I sort of worked my way up the uh, the corporate world in terms of both the size of organisation that I was working for and then what I was doing in it. Uh, and I finished my first career as a group managing director uh, in a FTSE 100 company. Um, I then left the corporate world uh, and I set up a training provider. I set up uh, Corndell, which was under my leadership, the fastest growing management and tech training company uh, in the UK. Uh, built that from September 2016 when I founded it and I was chief executive there uh, through to selling it in September 2020. Uh, and then I left in September 2021 and I retired. I retired for three weeks. Uh, <laughs> and during that three week retirement, I came across this groundbreakingly magical technology, uh, generative artificial intelligence, large language models, uh, and I could see an immediate application for that technology back in my first career, bid writing, tender writing, proposal writing. Um, so put together a, a group of super smart people around me uh, and then built essentially a piece of software that allows people to write bids, tenders, proposals far faster, far more efficiently and to win more as a result of that. Yeah, good stuff. Um, do, do you know? Do you want to give us a bit of a top line of uh, also Gen AI in, in terms of like size, um, yeah, and how the well, where the well, the journey of the company, I guess, from uh, inception to where it is today. Yeah, so uh, also Gen AI, there's nearly 100 of us now. We're on three continents, so in the US, uh, Australia, and then headquartered uh, in King's Cross with other AI companies like Google's DeepMind, uh, you know, Facebook is a, a big scene uh, here in, uh, in, in, in London. Um, we, uh, you know, we, we, we have scores of, of customers again across the um, across the globe. Uh, we just raised uh, $22 million uh, in investment from Blossom Capital, which we're using to further enhance the product and keep us, uh, you know, two years ahead of anything else on the market in terms of allowing bid writing professionals and teams to write bids uh, faster and better and win more, essentially. People using our software win, people not using it tend to lose. Yeah, good to hear. And, and do you notice any trends in terms of uh, the industry sectors that uh, that are maybe most interested in AI. Have you, yeah, have you noticed any trends with that? Maybe, yeah, mm -hmm. certain cup, certain industries that are uh, more up for it, or and some that maybe aren't. Or like, where is it most beneficial? Maybe that's. Yeah, uh, across question. all sectors. So if you look across our customers, you know, construction, big four consultancy, professional services, uh, employability, training, kind of just just really across uh, a huge, uh, a huge range of uh, different sectors. So really anybody who does business to business or business to government bidding can benefit from the software. Got it. Um, can you, how has AI improved efficiency and speed in bid management processes and what kind of specific metrics can you provide uh, to support this? Yeah, so um, you start off, you start off how do writers write? That's, that's where we started from. How do we take the workflow and make it super quick, super fast and super good for bid writers? So, I mean, like you start off with a blank piece of paper and a question. Hmm. And then from that question, you try and come up with some ideas that you want to include in your answer. Uh, so if I say, um, you know, what should I what should I talk about at a webinar on AI? And um, there's three ways that I might go about answering that question. 
One is I might look at what I've done in previous webinars. So we call that library. So that's basically all of your previous bids, tenders, proposals, your, um, your policies, your procedures, your annual reports, everything, basically your entire proprietary library. You'll go and have a look through that. Now, if you're a human, it might take you a very long time to read those bids, right? That's why bid writers mm. stay with organisations. They've got this kind of like good organisational memory. Uh, the great thing is computers are just super fast. Now computers can read that library using our software super fast and pick out the relevant material. So, uh, yeah, what should I talk about in an AI webinar? I'm going to go to see what I spoke about in previous webinars. Then I'm also going to uh, search the internet. So I'm going to do a Google search, right? You know, writers do this to try and find, you know, what what good answers, what 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 might be some ideas from other people. Uh, and then th so we call that internet AI. So you've got library AI, you've got internet AI. Uh, and then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make some stuff up, right? You know, we've got this kind of creative element. So we just use pure creative AI. So from there, then the what artificial intelligence is very good at is coming up with ideas quickly. What it doesn't have is judgment. So the human's going to say, oh, of those ideas from previous bids, I want to include that one, that one, that one. Oh, of mm. those ideas from the internet, I want to include that one and that one. Oh, and of those creative AI idea ideas, I want to include that one and that one. So again, how you would do that brainstorming of an answer. You're then able to construct from those, let's say you've picked eight ideas that you want to construct your answer around. You want to order those, so put those eight out ideas in the order that you think is uh, a compelling narrative structure. Then we just tell that we literally in our software click a button and we tell the AI to write the first whatever it is, 2000, 3000 words. So it takes those ideas, it takes that order, you put them in and it writes your first draft text for, let's say, 3000 words. From there, you're going to want to incrementally improve it. So at that point, um, you know, we do things like what we call our we will button, right, where we just put it all in consistent future um, present tense. Um, we'll um, add case studies, we'll add statistics, we'll mark it against the published scoring criteria. We'll so all of these kind of then iterative transformations again as a human would write from their first draft to get the first draft to be from a say a seven out of ten to a ten out of ten which actually wins uh wins a bid so it, as software is a tool for humans uh, it is built to speed up humans and facilitate the writing of winning bids good stuff um, and can you can you think of any examples of successful bids where artificial intelligence is played a cr crucial role in um i don't know one of your clients yeah, strategy yeah, li 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 literally yeah literally hundreds <laughs> so if you yeah. look i mean uh, so for example i thought it was very interesting to look at the last round of aeb tenders and if you looked at there were some very big losers and none of them were using our software and there were some very big new entrants most of whom were using our software there you go um and what competitive competitive advantages uh, to, uh does ai like bringing to bid teams and how sustainable are they in the long term do you think yeah i mean imagine trying to write a financial model without using excel using a pencil and a piece of paper compared to somebody who's got excel well what advantage does it bring well it's faster and by being faster you can be more sophisticated so using our tool you you know for if every other bid team is taking four weeks to get to a first draft and yeah. you're taking seven minutes to get to a first draft, you can then spend the rest of your time on the really value adding kind of top level point scoring activity, whereas they're still trying to scrabble around, trying to read previous bids, trying to get subject matter experts to put in information, et cetera, et cetera. And just on those subject matter experts, like, what ways has AI helped like, enhance their decision making and reduce like human biases and bid evaluations? Yeah, so I think for subject matter experts, I think um, I'd say two things. So one is um, subject matter experts are often brilliant subject matter experts, but potentially they're not writers. Um, mm. So it allows you to get information out of their heads and put it in compelling um, business prose that actually meets the scoring criteria and actually answers the question. I, I've lost track of the number of times I asked subject matter experts for an answer to a question and they seem to answer a different question, but some of the you know, kind of information mm -hmm. is relevant. So, um, so, so you, you've got that piece. Also, the best way to get information out of a subject matter expert, as we know, is to give them a seven out of 10 answer you've written, because then they'll redline it why it's wrong, rather than to try and get them to fill the piece of paper. Because as professional writers, we all know the blank piece of paper is the hardest bit to get past, whereas revising is actually a much less cognitive load. Um, and how do you ensure data security and privacy in uh, AI powered bid management processes? And you know, how can how can you build trust with clients regarding data handling? 
Yeah, so um, look, on data security and privacy, you definitely, definitely, definitely should not be using ChatGPT or any um, publicly available uh, things. If you do, you are essentially just giving away all of your organization's secrets and allowing your competitors to get those um, out again. So you need a secure language engine, which is securely hosted, where your data is completely segregated and where your data is only used for training your language engine and not used for training anybody else's. Um, so that's what we provide at also Gen AI completely segregated um, data. We, we have customers in the you know, defense industry in this country, in the United States. We you know, we are um, as, as secure as you can get. Okay. Um, and what potential drawbacks associated with AI and bid management and, you know, how are you how are you mitigating them? Yeah, I guess there's a, a real risk. Bid writers don't have to work weekends anymore and evenings. They can have a decent social life. They can enjoy <laughs> themselves. They can, you know, kind of, uh, <laughs> no, kind of uh, um, look, I, as with any tool, tools need to be used responsibly. You know, you can use a hammer to um, knock in nails. You can always use also use a hammer to hit somebody over the head. One's an appropriate <laughs> use of the tool, one isn't. Um, so it's, it's really important with any sort of, um, any very powerful tool like artificial intelligence that you're making sure that a human is responsible for using that tool is reviewing the output of that tool uh, and is taking responsibility then for what's being said I, I don't want to lead to a situation where people are able to um you know write compelling winning bids that they've got no um desire or ability to to actually deliver so we need to make sure there's that connection with reality yeah, good stuff. Um, we were both at APMP, uh, the APMP conference last week. I think one of the topics there is about, um, you know, how do we blood new talent into the profession? Um, you know, how do you, how do we also address concerns about AI's impact on, you know, job displacement among employees involved in bit management? Yeah, I think the the, the best um, the best case study for this is radiology. So in 2015. Um, it was predicted basically that there would be no radiologist jobs in five years time and there was no point studying uh, radiology because mm. AI would be able to diagnose um, from x-rays etc far more accurately and far quicker than humans could. In fact it didn't take till 2020, it happened in 2018, that um, artificial intelligence is now just much better than human radiologists at diagnosis. Um, so that's about 70% of what radiologists did. So um, did we sack a whole load of radiologists? Did radiologists salaries plummet? Uh, no, um, quite the opposite. There's actually more job vacancies for radiologists and the average salary has gone up. Why is that? Well, radiologists are no longer doing what's seen to now be grunt work, right, of kind of like of the, of the diagnostics. And instead, they're spending their time with patients. They're spending their time on treatment plans and actually making people well, rather than just the uh, the pure diagnosis um, capability that the AI can now do better than them. So I think we'll see the same thing with bid writing. Actually, did, yeah. Sorry, go on. Actually, that that you know that first drafting, that spending a week trying to find the case study because no one in the organisation knows where the case study is, and you're having to phone around a hundred different departments. That isn't value adding. Clicking a button and getting that in seven seconds, so that you can then repurpose that case study and use it more cleverly to evidence the point. That's human value adding activity, and that's not going to go. We're just going to push humans up the cognitive hierarchy. So you're not you're not spending your whole time you know, reading 17 appendices of criteria because our software um, summarises it for you in three seconds. Do, do you think, just to argue the other side of it, do you think there are any jobs that would be created uh, in a bid function with your, you know, with the use of your, with the use of your platform? Yeah, uh, AI assisted bid writer. So, um, yeah. uh, you know, it's not, AI isn't going to destroy your job. Somebody using AI, if you don't, it's going to destroy your job because yeah. they'll just be like trying to be a financial modeler and not being able to use Excel. You, you're just not going to have a job going forward or, gra okay. or, graphic, or a graphic designer and not being able to use software. Gotcha. Um, have you seen any instances where AI has made incorrect recommendations or decisions and, you know, how would you handle these situations? So one of my favourite things to do with large language models, such as uh, you know, which our technology is um, is using, and I say how we ground it uh, because mm. you can you want to use different tools for different purposes. And um, one of my favourite things to do is ask it how the speed of light uh, is affected by the Darjeeling tea harvest. Now, anyone with a basic background in physics knows that it isn't, but you can get uh software yeah our mm. software to write you a very good article on that if you just use the creative ai now of course as soon as you start using our fact checker um it tells you straight away that um this isn't true 
But um, if you if you just wanted to turn off all fact checking and just write whimsical um, pieces, then um, then yes, of course you you know the um, the way large language models work, which is a part of the text stack, the part of the text stack that gives it this remarkable linguistic capability. Um, they are just picking random words to follow other random words. There's no um, there's no grounding in truth for that. To get a grounding in truth, you need um, your previous bids, tenders, proposals. You need the internet. You need other fact checking sources. Cool. And can you explain any contingency plans for bid management in the case of, you know, system failures or uh, or any AI related issues? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, kind of all modern software which is properly built just has um, fail safe after fail safe. So, um, you know, you 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 want to have your data backed up in a number of different places. Uh, you want to have what, what do you know what NASA calls system level redundancy? So if you if you want to put the Mars rover, right, you know, you, you're not going to be able to go up and fix it. Right? You've got to be able to say, so what you have is you have redundancy, which isn't just two versions of the same system. You have a system A and a system B, which both work completely differently, but which both can do the same um, task. So you have what's called system level redundancy, which makes things very, very, very um, robust. Good stuff. And um, you know, how do you ensure that AI doesn't inadvertently lead to uh, un unethical practices such as data manipulation or you know unfair bid advantages? And you know, how do we how do we remain transparency with that? Yeah, it's 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 not an unfair bid advantage to use Excel or a calculator or word processor. You're just stupid if you don't. <laughs> it isn't an unfair advantage to use artificial intelligence. You're just stupid if you don't. Um, it's a perfectly fair advantage. Why would government or a business want a worse tender put in because somebody for some unknown reason is refusing to use the latest tool available? I'm you know I'm 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 only gonna put this nail in, but I'm only going to do it hammering it in with my head rather than using a hammer. Well, you can choose to do that. It's just stupid. Yeah. And actually, if you, I'm asking you to be my carpenter, I'm going to pick a different carpenter because um, <laughs> that, that, you, you're a silly person to do that. Um, so <laughs> I, I, think <laughs> that, I think there's I think there's that level. Um, look, I mean, you, you know, you've got to make sure that everything somebody's putting in a bid is true, that they can actually do. And I think there's all sorts of ways um, that you need to ensure that's the case. But I'd also say that is, of course, not a problem with AI, it's a problem with bidding, tender writing, proposal writing with AI or without AI. Yeah, understood. Um, mm -hmm. Are you able to give the audience a, a bit of a walk around the, the platform and then we'll, we'll hand over to them yeah. to put some questions yeah. in the group? Yeah, I'd be um, I'd be delighted. So let me uh, let's just go straight to kind of the uh, the piece. So um, I can't remind, remind me the title of this webinar. I can't remember. It's the uh, well, how, how, is it, how, how is it transforming the um, the bid uh, the bid and, uh, proposal management profession? Okay. So, how is AI transforming the bid and proposal management profession? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask the artificial intelligence to ideate. So, again, as I said at the start of the, the webinar, how would you actually go about um, doing this? Well, what you're going to do is you're going to go to previous bids, tenders, and proposals. You're going to make some stuff up and you're going to go to the internet, and all of those things will give you ideas. So, here we go. This is creative AI. AI based software can automate tedious and time consuming tasks such as the creation of proposal outlines, document formatting, and proofreading. If we like that idea, we'll keep it. Do you know what? That's a very good idea. We'll keep it. AI is increasing productivity and satisfaction within bid writing teams by automating some tasks, reducing the time spent on each project. That's from our library. Where's that from? Oh, that's from one of our social media posts. So we can see exactly where that information comes from. Uh, AI, AI is enabling a shift in the bidding landscape through digital transformation, requiring companies to adapt and refine their systems. That's from the internet. Where's that from? OK, well, this is from a blog called uh, winningthebusiness.com. So again, we can find out exactly where that's um, exactly where that's from. Do we like that idea? We like that idea. We'll keep it. Um, automated tools can help to identify and quantify potential risks. Not, yeah, we like that idea. Early adoption of AI in bid writing can provide a competitive edge, potential to automate complex tasks previously thought impossible. Yeah, we like that idea. So, so again, you see how if we like an idea, we can keep it. And we're going to put it then in our um, pace and we'll go, OK, we like this idea. We like this idea. We like this idea. Um, here, then, we've got our structure. Go, OK, well, maybe I want to do this. Maybe that's the, the sort of piece that I like. Right, OK, I'm now happy with that. Uh, and then once we're happy with our ideas, what we want to write about and what we want to say, once we're happy with the order that we've put it in. So notice there's a huge amount of augmented intelligence here. 
Although the AI has very fast come up with those ideas, it's the human who's then selecting whether those ideas go into the proposal or not. And it's the human who's selecting um, the order that that goes in to give it its narrative thrust and its, uh, its, its narrative potential. So once we're happy, I mean, again, like as a, as a human writer storyboards, then we just ask the AI, OK, fantastic. Now write us our first draft. The yellow says that we've used creative AI. So again, we want to go back and check this. So you send around factfulness. Um, the rest has been pulled either from internet sources or from uh, or from um, the internet. So here you can see we've written our first 2,000 words. So how long would it have taken me to write 2,000 words on this? I don't know, half a day, a day, and I've done it in a few seconds. So early adoption of AI in bid writing provided a competitive edge. The early adoption of artificial intelligence bid writing provided a significant competitive advantage. This was evidence from the founder of also generalized Sean Williams used AI to automate the bid price writing at first glance. So it didn't seem far-fetched or impossible, particularly when you can see we just come through we talk through how we've pulled that and if we want to know where have all those sources come from there we go we can see exactly where all of those sources have uh, have have come from so we can start to get um uh, start to get a view on those sources oh so then we go okay well that's a that's a good first draft um but you know what i want to talk a little bit more about how auto gen ai is going to do this so, uh, so I'm just going to go back to our editor. I'm going to say, well, you know, kind of, all right, this is all good, but I want you to make it really kind of like talk about what Autogen AI is going to do. So Autogen AI, and we always give three examples again, right? You know, kind of, so Autogen AI has demonstrated its capabilities to automate complex tasks, it's bid writing, blah, blah, blah. Autogen AI will continue to provide significant competitive advantages. Do you know what? I think this is the, um, this is the answer that I really like. So we'll go with, um, we'll go with that one. Okay, we say, well, that's still, that's still good. OK, let's look at the AI's revolution on the way bid times works. But OK, fine. But what my customer is really interested in um, is, um, I don't know, they're really interested in uh, ensuring SMEs and voluntary sector organisations are part of the solution, right? That's from the tender. So OK, well, just like we would tell a bid writer, incorporate that theme. We can just ask the AI to incorporate that theme, put that put that in for us. So again, we might just take that and you can see start to talk about how we're by incorporating the ensuring SMEs and voters in position, teams are able to produce it when it's part of the process. Again, you can start to see how we put that um, in. So okay, well, that's that's all fine. Artificial intelligence spearheading a significant transformation in the bidding process, digital innovation is to be okay, but that's you you're sort of showing me that, you're not telling me that. Explain to me how. Well again, so we might say, let's just get the AI to give us now talk about how we're going to do this, make this really evidenced prose. And then we talk about, again, start to put in more um, improvements. Um, other things that, of course, we're always doing as bid writers, say, OK, well, that's great. We've written 162 words. Fantastic. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, word count is 150 words. So that's no good. Well, OK, that's fine. In the same way that writers can just be asked to rewrite that and bring it down to the, uh, the right word limit. We can ask the AI, please rewrite this for me, but now do it in, in fewer words. Again, we always give lots of lots of examples. Maybe we want to take this 125 words. We'll go with that and then take uh, take out. So that would give a, a view of some of the sort of top level um, power. Other things we can do, we can take in documents of any length. So you can take in like a million words and extract bid decision information or commissioners' priorities, compliance, statistics, dates and times. So if you want to read a customer's annual report, if you want to read a ministerial speech, if you want to read an invitation to tender, an RFP, and just pull out the key themes, you can do it in seconds, again, using the AI. And we've also got a built-in research assistant then where you can start to just find information. So let's say I'm writing a bid on uh, helping young people in Brent to find jobs. Uh, so... Um, what um, organisations help young people in Brent? So if I want to, you know, kind of say I'm I'm writing a partnership section, whatever else it might, um, whatever else it might be. Again, I can just ask the AI to um, to find us an answer. So what this is now doing is it's now searching the internet. It's going to lots and lots of different websites. It's pulling back a whole load of information and then it's writing that information. It's, it's amalgamating it, looking for contradictions, looking for support, and then it's writing the very best answer. So again, this is pulled from the library, Brent Centre for Young People, Mental Health, numerous NHS clinics, One Flow, One Brent, and it's partner organisations provide activities. And again, if we want to know exactly where those come from, 
we can go and just find out exactly where that information has been pulled from. So we've always given a source for what we're what we're doing. So that, that would be a I mean, I've shown you about one one hundredth of what our tool does, but that would give you a, a very quick view on uh, on on the software and what it does. Just I before. Yeah, in fact, um, we're we'll, we'll, uh, happy to take questions from the audience, guys. So, yeah, please feel free to put them in the uh, in the chat for Sean. Um, uh, while you were doing that, I was wondering how like, how well AI can be client centric, like where you have to be maybe quite, um, uh, you know, you're looking to be maybe quite emotive with the client or, you know, w w what's your what's your take on that? Yeah, so we create what we call tone of voice buttons for each of the customers that we work with in their specific language engine, where we can write in their specific tone of voice or indeed in specific tones of voice for their customers. Uh, we're also able to. Uh, so, so yeah, Emily, you've asked about tone of voice. Let me um, let, let me give you a uh, let me let me show you kind of um, uh, that. So hopefully uh, hopefully you can see my screen again. So. Let me give you an example of tone of voice. Now we we use Shakespearean just to make it kind of um, really really clear. But if we just take this and just sort of want to want to put it into a tone of yeah. voice. Now obviously I'm I'm using a specific um, example for you. Uh, so ah also Gen AI a most wondrous boon to business. Tis true for bid writing. Tis a marvel so grand that few can do. And we start to uh, pick up that. So of course that that's a, a rather silly example of tone of voice, but gives you an example of just how quickly the AI can do that with a click of a button. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, right. Is there any questions from the audience, please? Anyone got anything? I can, to, I can uh, see a few. So where did the yeah. tender requirements come from? Are they manually included or just the AI review? So again, yes. Yeah, so the AI can um, uh, automatically extract them for you. So again, if I show, so this is our extraction tool. You put the RFP in and then you can extract bid decision, commissioners, priorities, compliance, statistics, dates and timelines. You can extract anything essentially you want from um, using the extraction tool. So that's where you get the um, that's where you get the wind themes uh, from. Uh, so I'm just going through the questions. Yeah, what is involved in bid building a library of content? Um, give us the documents. Uh, in the first instance, so you can um, give us a link to a, a you know a, a document storage or email them. You could send us a server if you wanted to. Um, you know, basically any any way that you want to get the documents across to us, uh, and then you'll be continually updating that library of content. So again, that's super easy to do in our system after the initial upload. I just click on here, click file upload, click browse files. Uh, and then I can pick any of my files and, uh, and 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 upload them. So it's super easy. And then where we've got our document library, you can see here I've got all of my documents in, in folders. Here it might be our cybersecurity piece, GDPR piece, all of those kind of pieces. So um, so super easy to uh, do to upload documents. Uh, and so to building the library, very very easy to do to start with, uh, and then very very easy to maintain. How does the licensing model work? It's a per seat um, licensing model. Um, big customers pay us a lot of money. Um, small charities we have a, uh, a not for profit rate for um, and then everywhere in between. This may be a how long is a piece of string type question because you give a rough idea of cost. I use an implementation fee user license. So it's just a um, it's just a user license fee. Um, and I would be enormously happy, Nick. So it depends how many users you've got, what type of organisation you are, uh, what you'd be doing with the uh, the software. As I say, we've got special rates for not for profits and charities and SMEs. So um, if you're interested, uh, Nick, I would suggest that you get in contact uh, with us. So I know Adrian from my team is on this call. Uh, Adrian's um, email address is adrian at autogenai.com. Uh, and if you drop him an email, he'd be delighted to one is do a personal demo for you uh, and two is then talk you through the pricing. When a draft is completed, does it automatically add your draft to the library for future bids to use? No, you you upload it again. Um, we 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 strongly suggest only uploading winning bids. So we want to make sure that you're you're happy with your draft before you choose to upload it rather than uploading it automatically. How long is implementation? Uh, we can do the training of your language engine 48 hours after you give us your documents uh, and it takes 20 minutes to learn how to use the system. But then we have a series of expert classes and, and master classes for bid writers to help people really get the best out of the, the system. 
Are there confidentiality issues um, with putting things into the uh, system? No, your um, your language engine is completely ring fenced to you. So the information you put in there is not being shared. It's not being learnt by anything else. It is completely ring fenced to you. So similarly to you putting it on a, an internal SharePoint site, um, it, it is it is completely ring fenced and it's completely yours. Uh, if your bid library is currently on SharePoint, we can link to that. Uh, or we can build your, your own library if you've got problems with SharePoint. I know SharePoint is not the most easy of systems to um, to use. As far as you know, are clients using any similar software to assess proposals to pick out content? Um, so, so, so yes, undoubtedly people are using this to um, to do um, summaries, um, to find you know has a has a has a bidder met particular criteria. Um, so, so we know around the world. Um, organizations are talking about using software like this to um to speed up again not to replace but to speed up the assess uh the assessment process and indeed we're talking to a number of uh local authorities and governments about about exactly this many of us use rfp software for example rfpio and lupio i'm sorry about that sam um does also gen ai <laughs> plan and integration to reduce touch points a bit uh, no we plan to replace rfpio and uh, and lupio uh, it's um, the, the we we need to use software that's um, fit for purpose, uh, which has generative AI at its at its heart. So um, our our plan would be to essentially just integrate everything into our software rather than link with RFPIO or or Lupio. Um, do you suggest only bid managers use the software or make it accessible for the bid team? Uh, we would say you should make this accessible for all of your writers. Uh, your subject matter experts who are writing a lot of content, uh, your reviewers, your marketing teams, um, all of those uh, users are going to get massive value and save just huge amounts of time using the software. Can it be used in multiple jurisdictions? Yes. Um, so most of our customers are international organisations doing bidding for governments and businesses around the world. How do you use review buyer feedback from previous successful or unsuccessful bids? So again, um, you use that to train the language engine. So you can both use it to train um, functionality within the system. For example, rewrite this to meet these criteria. Uh, or you know, if, if you've been told your bid wasn't innovative enough or you're not giving enough evidence, uh, again, we can program then the system to learn from um, those pieces. Um, you can also then put into the inputs tab, which I showed you for integration, um, core things that you might want to integrate. So if somebody says, um, you, you know, you need to give more granular evidence of uh, milestones, for example, we can just create your functionality, which will do that automatically for you using the AI. Can you restrict the library search to a specific group of documents? What a great question. Um, so the answer at the moment is no, and in two weeks time will be yes. So we engineer extremely fast. We drop um, enhancing uh, enhancements to the software every two weeks into production. Uh, and that is um, it's something a lot of our customers have asked us for. Um, you know, sometimes I don't want case studies from every geography. I only want case studies from Australia post 2022. Um, so that functionally functionality will be in in, uh, in two weeks time. I'm sorry I can't show it you now, but I will be able to show it you in two weeks. Can you pull information from an organization's own knowledge management platform? Yes, absolutely. Who controls and manages uh, the bid library? Uh, you do. Um, so, um, and again, you can have as many library uh, managers as you want. Super simple system. You just upload documents and then can delete documents from the library. It's a, it takes seconds. Lupio, Pitch Perfect, etc. have design elements and can build full bids with visual elements formatting. Does Auto Gen AI do summarily? Is that in the works? So we don't at the moment, Anna, but it is in the works. Yes. Um, so good question. Uh, so, so not present, but we will do. Um, is it appropriate for bidding consultancy to use for multiple clients? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think the answer is yes. You would need to, of course, segregate very clearly and get permission from your ultimate client for, for using the system, um, just to make sure that you weren't breaching any um, piece. Obviously, if, you, if you've got client A and client B, you wouldn't want to be using client A's case studies to evidence client B's proposals and, uh, and vice versa. Oh, we have some more questions in the Q&A area. I don't know where that is, Megan, but um, somebody might do. <coughs> uh, I should be able to get onto that. Hang on, bear with. 
Uh, are you sending this to procurement teams uh, for evaluating bids proposals against their scoring criteria, potentially m removing any human bias? Yeah, I, I think uh, so, so. I think you want to remove human bias, but you don't want to remove humans and that our humanity is really important. If I'm, you know, if I'm picking someone who's going to mark a bid for who's going to run a prison, right? You know, I want I want a human doing that, right? I, I don't mind that the that software is being used to speed that process up. I don't mind that it's being used to check compliance, but ultimately whether this person is fit and proper to run such an important human service, I want a human to make that decision. So, and that's, you know, kind of say, so, so humans have biases, but we also have judgment and we also understand ourselves and understand other humans. So I think um, I, I never want to see humans removed from either the writing or the reviewing. I think we are a very, very important part of this process and, and always will be. Um, can the system be integrated with other platforms such as MS Teams, SharePoint? Uh, yeah, so we're integrating with Word and Google Docs by the end of the year, um, and, and that allows us then to integrate with, with, with other functionality, depending on exactly what you want. Again, we, we can build custom integrations for each customer that we work with. Cool. Um, so uh, one from Anonymous. Uh, many of us use RFP software, for example, RFPIO and Lupio. Does Auto Gen AI play integrate um, plan and integration to reduce touch points for bid teams? Yeah, so I, I thought I'd answered that one. So, um, so we're, we're not planning on any integrations with RFPIO or Lupio because we don't think they add much functionality. Um, and where is the information stored on the library? Uh, currently, have a uh, yeah, the bid teams currently on SharePoint. So, what, yeah, where's it stored? Yeah, so um, we would store it in um, secure AWS um, geographically co uh, geographically co-located um, hosted sites. If you really wanted to carry on using your storage solution, again, we can integrate with that. Uh, can bid users score the generative content uh, to help it continuously improve and align with the organization's voice? Yeah, so um, you're automatically doing that. So notice how we always give three options. The fact that you're always picking an option is giving us a massive amount of data to keep um, improving the system. Great stuff. Uh, any more questions in the Q&A from anyone? I think that's it. Well, uh, yep, that's all from me, Sean. Um, I don't know if you've got anything to... There was, uh, there was, there was, yes, there was one more question about differences of also Gen AI to Copilot. So, so Copilot is a generalist writing tool, um, so it, it can do general writing pretty well, as, as you'd expect, but it's not a bid specific tool. So Copilot will definitely speed up your writing, um, but it won't speed you up sort of seven, eight times like like uh, Auto Gen AI will, because we're specifically built for um, you know, putting in case studies, putting in evidence, explaining how, putting into consistent tense mm -hmm. things that um, things that Copilot isn't. Uh, so we showed a Shakespearean response. What other parameters are there in terms of word, character length, formal versus formal? We, Tony, so we can do anything. So, uh, so for example, we built for one of our customers uh, a neutral academic tone. Um, for one of our customers, we built, you know, kind of compelling, kind of, uh, you know, kind of um, sparkly, very uh, business to business marketing. Um, so, so my prompt engineers for each organisation we work with are able to build you specific tones of voices and for some of our you know some of our customers have got 200 page branding guidelines and we're able to just take those synthesize them and turn them into one click of a click of a button where do you see AutoGen AI in five years uh, in the same way that nobody creates a financial model without using excel nobody is going to write a big tangible proposal without using AutoGen AI it, Nick, yeah, it's a tiny proportion of the market at the moment um, but those people are all winning so it's just going to get bigger and bigger uh, what models do we use? We use about 20 different models. So we use open AI models, we use anthropic models, we use Cohere models, we use our own models that we've built ourselves. Um, so um, we use the right model for the right linguistic task. Uh, we do some fine tuning, but mostly fine tuning is OK. But what you really want in this space is incredibly sophisticated retrieval augmented generation and prompting. Uh, and so right model with right retrieval augmented generation and right prompting. Sorry if that doesn't make sense to many people online, but hopefully it makes sense to Gerald. <laughs> who asked the question. Yeah. Okay. 
Fantastic. Yeah. Well, look, as I say, Adrian put his email in. I'm sure we'll put it in again. Adrian at autogenai.com. Come and talk to us. We'd, we'd love to show you what we've built and we'd love to uh, build a specific language engine for you and your organisations. Great stuff. Well, look, Sean, thank you again for taking the time out to, to have a chat today. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll connect soon. Fantastic. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thanks for the time. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Bye now.